Welcome today to our midweek Bible study called Morning Glory. Today our text is found in the book of Isaiah the prophet, chapter 43. Why don't you meet me at verse 6? We're going to talk about speaking to the various directions on the compass. Praise God. Let's open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we go into your word, we thank you that the entrance of your word into our heart brings light. So we ask that your Holy Spirit would quicken or illuminate the scriptures to the understanding of our mind and of our spiritual heart so that we can understand your word, take it, apply it, and enjoy the wonderful benefits and the righteous fruit that it produces. We give you all of the praise. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to jump back and pull up some things that I learned. Oh, probably about, let me see here, uh, about 28 years ago. Uh, some of the things I'm going to share with you today, they became a revelation to me during that time. And they have proven to be true, not only because they're biblical and they're in the scripture, but of course, we should be able to take these and uh, apply them and see those results. And I want to talk about some of these things today uh, about speaking to the north and so forth. But before we uh, look at verse six, let me just share that uh, Rita from Lancaster who was watching Pure Gold on God TV, she uh, called our office and she testified to our secretary who answered the phone and she said that she prayed the prayer of salvation when I gave the invitation to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. She prayed that prayer and she gave her life to Jesus. And she is an elderly lady, and she doesn't have any internet, but she will continue, she said, to watch the Pure Gold programs on God TV. So we praise the Lord that she has given her heart to Christ, and she now belongs to Jesus. Her sins are washed away, and her name is written in the book of life. She's on her way to heaven. And if you're watching uh, me on the, on, on the internet, and uh Sometime in the past, you gave your heart to Christ through these programs. Why don't you email us and let us know? Because we rejoice in the salvation of souls. We greatly rejoice. Just shoot us an email at contact at stephenbrooks.org. And as you know, we are believing God for one million souls to come to Christ. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I think about what the Apostle Peter said. Let me read this verse to you real quickly. And uh, this would be Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. And Peter said, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness. So this long delay in time, or what the critics would say, hey, you know, he's never coming back. The things he said, you know, they're never going to be fulfilled. This is all make-believe. Uh, well, no, it's not like, you know, God takes a nap and he's been on vacation. This slackness or this long duration of time, Peter says, it's actually the long-suffering uh, and that word long suffering means patience, loving patience that's really stretched out over a long period of time. So the Lord is not slack concerning this promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us. Why? Because Peter said that God is not willing, he doesn't desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God loves the world, and he loves the people of the world. But the people of the world who don't know him, they're separated from him because of their sins. But God's not willing for any of them to perish. And he's very patient, and he does everything he can to reach them with his love, with the good news that redemption can be found in his son. Oh, praise God. So we thank God Today that he is not willing that any should perish. So my friends together we're doing all that we can to continue to reach lost men and women that they may not perish in their sins but they can find eternal life through faith in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now along the same flow let's jump over now to our text Isaiah chapter 43 verse 6. 
And it says, I will say to the north, give them up. Hallelujah. And to the south, do not keep them back. Notice the authoritative voice in this. Notice the anointing of the Spirit in these declarations. But they're more than declarations. This can go over into the arena in the spirit realm where this is a commandment. This is a commandment. Give them up. In other words, devil, this is not a suggestion. You're going to have to give them up. I am commanding you to do it. Okay, so I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. So God looks over the planet. And God's like, I want a harvest. I want souls. I want sons and daughters. And so the heart cry of God can move through the believer where God says, release them to the enemy. He says to the enemy, release them. And that cry, that passion of God is worked through the child of God. See, Jesus, after his death, his burial and his resurrection, and then eventually after that, his ascension, he ascended to heaven, and he is seated right now at the right hand of the heavenly Father. Now, you understand, of course, he's not sitting there all the time. He can get up off the throne, and he can walk around heaven, or he could uh, visit somebody on the earth in a, in a vision or something like that. But his position is that of kingship and lordship over all of the earth. The Father has given that to him. And the Lord Jesus, while he rules and reigns, he rules and reigns through his people in the sense that we are the hands of the Lord. We are the voice of the Lord. So this passion of the Lord can be so strong in us that we find ourselves rising up and saying on behalf of the Lord, give them up. And so when you're in that anointing, when you're in the spirit, it's not like you're saying it. It's like He's saying it through you, and it is a commandment. And when it is done under the anointing, the gates of hell tremble, and the powers of darkness take these things very, very seriously, and they have to back down. Now, we see this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Let me start in verse 1 where it says, And you, that would be the believer, he is made alive. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. Yes, that's our past state, our past condition, which thank God we're no longer in. But it was at one time a place where we were dead, that's spiritually dead. Okay, not physically dead, but we were spiritually dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Now, we all did. We once walked in that former life of being spiritually dead. According to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So the prince of the power of the air, Satan, he has his treasures of darkness. And those are the souls of men and women who are lost in their sins. And Satan takes great delight as the prince of the power of the air, uh, as ruling over the vast empire of darkness, where he keeps these people locked in uh, spiritual darkness behind a very thick veil of lies and deception. But my friends, we can jump into the battle. We can jump into the fray and say, no, devil, you're not going to take them all to hell. We're going to jump in here and we're going to plunder souls. Hallelujah. And we see here the example of the apostolic cry, the apostolic commission. I will say to the north, give them up and to the south, do not keep them back. See, that's talking about souls that are in darkness. Bring my sons from afar. See, those, those are all the males that are out there that are not serving God. God wants them. Hallelujah. Bring, he wants sons. Bring my sons from afar. And my daughters, he sees all these ladies uh, out there not serving him. He wants them to come to him through his son. He wants daughters. And my daughters from the ends of the earth, this is global. This is not just local. Now, there is the local work. 
and we have a heart for that. There's the regional work, and there is the national uh, identity that we all embrace, while knowing that even though we may be Americans, or you may be watching, and you're Canadian, or you may be a Jamaican, or wherever uh, part of the world you're watching from, and, and we connect with our nationality, we still know that there's a higher nationality, and that is that we are citizens of heaven, citizens of the kingdom of God, and that citizenship rules and reigns over all. Praise God. Now, I told you that these were some things, such as Isaiah chapter 43, verse 6, that I began to get insight on almost 30 years ago. And this one particular verse was something that came to me of much deeper understanding at that time through the ministry of Dr. Larry Lee. And if you understand what happened with his ministry, and the explosive growth of his ministry back in the early 90s, then uh, you'll understand the great application of this verse. But Dr. Larry Lee, he had a church of about 300 people there in Texas. And God just really put it upon his heart to begin to pray for the lost. And he, he's thinking locally, you know, let's build the church up, let's reach the lost. But God had bigger ideas. And by the way, it was also Dr. Larry Lee who was not the only minister. He was one of them that caught the revelation from Matthew chapter 6 that the Lord's Prayer is more than just a prayer that you can pray through in 15 seconds. This is actually a blueprint or template that has headers. And as you work your way through each, each header, you know, such as my father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Well, that's a header. Uh, that, that's a template. You stop right there and you spend time on that before moving on to the next phase of that prayer, working your way slowly through the Lord's prayer. And when you work your way slowly through it, you're going to end up praying easily about 40 minutes. Often it comes out to about an hour. And that's a, that is a revelation that he received directly from the Lord. He didn't read the teachings of Dr. Youngie Cho, who also was teaching that, that the Lord's prayer, they, they had all caught on to that in South Korea and they began to run with that and they, they could just pray that prayer uh, over and over again. They called it running a lap on the track. If you see these uh, tracks at, you know, like the high school football stadium or a college stadium, usually oftentimes there's a track that goes around it for the track and field team to run on. Well, they would look at the Korean church looks at praying through the Lord's prayer as completing a lap. And maybe you ran a lap and you spent an hour praying it and you prayed all the way through it. Well, sometimes they like to run another lap. Praise God. That's how they view that. So that's something that Dr. Lee, he didn't know. Uh, that the church in Korea was using the Lord's Prayer as a template. It was something that the Holy Spirit revealed to him. And he caught that revelation, really began to pray, and the church began to grow. And he, he had some other revelations, particularly this one, verse 6, I will say to the north. And that really began to move the church quickly. So they were at a membership of about 300 and then they exploded, and in one year, they gained over 5,000 members. And, of course, with growth like that, other pastors particularly were wondering, well, what are you doing? Uh, you know, is it a certain program? Well, no, it wasn't a program. It wasn't because of the worship team, although they had good programs, had good worship. It wasn't anything like that. It wasn't something that uh, was man's ingenuity. It was just really, you know, getting on their knees and the, them praying with he leading. I think that's a big challenge for many in the church today where a lot of the pastors, uh, they would love for intercessors to do all the praying while they themselves really don't pray that much. But <laughs> those that really move into the breakthrough anointing, they themselves are also, uh, they're, they're, they're praying. They're right there at the spearhead of the forefront of the work going on, as we would say, behind the scenes. Praise God. So anyhow, Dr. Larry Lee talked about the time he was praying at night, and he was really praying for souls, and he was working this verse, verse 6, I will say to the north, 
And he was doing that. And he said, I was speaking to the north. North, give up the souls in the name of Jesus. Satan, release them. Take your hands off of them. Release the souls. And then he would turn and he would face the south, the, the opposite direction. He would speak to the south. In that, in that direction, south, I'm speaking to you. Satan, release the souls that are to the south of this church and this ministry. Let them go. And uh, he's doing that to the east and to the west. And he said that while he was doing that, he turned around and suddenly there in the room, this tremendous demonic creature appeared. He said it looked to him to be about nine feet tall. It was black in color. It looked like it was covered with like a dark type of moss, but it was a very powerful uh, evil spirit, very powerful demonic creature. And it had a huge chain and the chain was uh, a, a reference to all of the souls that were under the enslavement of the satanic kingdom. And of course, Satan's kingdom is a copycat of God's kingdom. Satan's kingdom, you also have Satan as the leader, but see, there's also a hierarchy. He has, he has generals and he has, you know, all the way down to, you know, all the way down to the very bottom ranks where the, those that aren't that important in leadership. But this was a very high ranking spirit. That was unveiled while Dr. Lee was praying and he sees this creature and this creature who had uh, this long chain and had, you know, all of these souls that were bound uh, through satanic power. This creature looked at Dr. Lee with such a look of disgust and it was a look like, are you really serious? Like you want to take me on? Are you really willing to fight me? So it was a very confrontational, angry uh, spirit that was very powerful. And Dr. Lee said the Holy Spirit surged through him so strongly. He said for the first time he understood what David must have felt when he faced Goliath because the Spirit of God came upon David. And he said the Spirit of God came upon him in this encounter. And although he's facing this demonic giant, such strength and power came into him and he he challenged that spirit and said yes you have to give them up and you're going to give them up and that was the authority of the spirit of god speaking through him and you know what happened that that large demon dropped the chain and walked off and after that, as you can imagine, more souls began to pour in. More souls began to pour in. Praise the Lord. This is very real. I will say to the north. And so you could do this literally. Give them up. Will you stand in the direction of the north and you say, give them up in the name of Jesus. Praise God. And who are you speaking to? The evil powers that hold people in chains of spiritual darkness. To the north, south, east, and west. Praise God. Now, Dr. Uh, Larry Lee said the Holy Spirit also revealed something to him later concerning this same verse. He said he was doing this again, speaking to the north and south and east and west, and the Holy Spirit uh, uh, revealed to him that, hey, oh, actually, he, let me say it like this. He, he tells the story where he went into a vision, and he sees the vision of his church, and his church... Uh, in the vision looked ginormous. And he said, well, Lord, he said, my church is not that big. It looked like a massive army marching in the spirit as they're commanding the powers of darkness, give up, give up, speak to give up. And so he said, well, Lord, you know, our church isn't that big that this, this vision you're showing me, I see a massive army, our church being represented as a massive army. And he said, the Lord said to him, uh, Larry, you don't understand that when you speak in the spirit, for example, to the east, to the east, give up the souls. He said, this is not East Texas you're just speaking to. Because that's what he thought. He thought, I'm speaking to East Texas and South Texas. <laughs> you know, this is just a local church. You know, uh, I'm wanting the church to grow because I want souls. Well, the Lord said, this is way beyond this. You're speaking to East Germany. You're speaking to the eastern part of the world. You're speaking to Jerusalem. You're speaking to the Middle East. And you're speaking to these vast areas of the world. And he began to realize that Jesus is Lord over the whole earth. 
Well, that vision ended, and the very next Sunday, he he sensed that vision would be somehow revealed to him or proved to him. So that Sunday morning, he said, is there anybody here as a visitor or a first-time guest who would just like, uh, maybe you're, you're from a different part of the country or a different part of the world, and we would just like to get to meet you. Come on down to the front right now. So a family, a husband and wife, and their two children, they stood up and they walked from their seat and they walked to the front of the church. And Larry Lee said, well, we're so happy that you're here today. He said, where are you from? He said, we have just moved here from East Germany. And he said, Dr. Lee, he said, I was listening to your teachings on audio cassette tape when I was in the army in East Germany. And I heard your teachings and they so impacted my life that I knew I needed to be a part of the prayer army that you're raising up. And me and my whole family have moved here to be a part of of this mighty prayer movement. So <laughs> Larry Lee was like, I'm convinced, Lord. <laughs> yes, that when you're speaking, when you're speaking in the spirit realm, that word is going forth. Hallelujah. Delivering and setting many people free. So those, those, that family was saved through his teaching and the preaching of the gospel. And then they moved all the way to Texas to join the church and be a part of what God was doing there. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So my friends, this, this is very important. And I want you to understand that you have authority in Christ Jesus. And when you're praying, yes, pray for your family and pray for your loved ones. And please pray for me and our ministry and pray for the other ministers that God will put upon your heart. But I want you to understand that we are coming into the time and I believe we're already in it where the harvest really is ripe. Jesus said, Oh, don't, don't say four months. And then, and then the harvest, Jesus said, look up your eyes. The fields are ripe for harvest right now. You know, so we need, we need harvesters. We need laborers. Praise the Lord. So your prayers can be very effective as we're joining in prayer together to reap a mighty harvest. Praise the Lord. And let me say this also, just as a little side note. Of course, this program is airing on Wednesday morning, but tomorrow I'm going up on the top of a mountain and I'm going to be spending quite some time uh, on top of a mountain in prayer. If you have any particular prayer request, uh, please email that to our ministry at contact at stephenbrooks.org and our administrative team will print those out and I will carry them. I've already got, I already have some, I have a actually a small stack, but I'm going to, I'm going to take all of them up on the top, not at the bottom, at the top of the mountain. And I will be praying for you and for the prayer request that you present to me. So uh, unsafe family members and other needs and petitions before the Lord that you may have, please send those to me so I can be praying in faith and in agreement with you. Not, not that in a sense that going on the top of a mountain, you know, is kind of like a different, you know, it's not like I got in the, you know, a spaceship or something like that. Uh, you can pray. You understand. You can pray in the valley. You can pray in a skyscraper. You can pray in the basement or a dungeon. Uh, in some ways, it doesn't matter. But there is something about when you take the time to go to a specific spot for the designated purpose of prayer, and then you pray. And, uh, you know, you're in a, it's a very quiet, peaceful place, then uh, that, the, that can be very, very helpful. Praise the Lord. So, yes, I'm going to the top of the mountain. I'd like to have your prayer request. Praise the Lord. I'll be praying for you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let's go over to the Gospel of Mark, continue along this same theme of teaching today, which is speak to the north. We're going to be in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3. Mark, chapter 3. And let's go down to verse 27. Jesus said, no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds or ties up the strong man. Makes sense, doesn't it? And then he will plunder his house. Well, the strong man being the kingdom of darkness, Satan, and his authority and dominion over, not the church, 
the unsaved. There needs to be a binding of the strong man through prayer, through prophetic decrees and to prophetic action to have the fruitful results. Praise God. There was one man that I used to minister to often, and I felt like I had him on the ropes like a boxer. You know, uh, you know, if you get the guy on the ropes and he's getting fatigued and weak, you feel like, okay, I, I, I'm almost there. I've got the victory. Well, I had been ministering to this man, building a friendship too, and I, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I said, next time I see him, I'm going to share an invitation with him to be saved. And I said, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him saved next time I see him. Now, you understand when I say I'm going to get him saved, I'm, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to work through me. Uh, this is not my, my so-called efforts. This is just me yielding to the Lord and doing the best I can to be a vessel for the Lord. But I said, Lord, next time I see him, you understand my heart. I'm going to get that guy saved. Well, I saw him again. I had no idea that would be the last time I would ever see him. But I saw him again, and somehow the devil, I don't, uh, I don't know how all that works. I think you and I have an understanding that he can try to block and divert and, uh, and hinder. But the next time I saw that guy, um, and he actually came to this church, not during a church service, but just a one-on-one -on -one talk. And he sat down in this very building. He sat, actually sat right over there, and I sat down and talked with him one-on-one. -on -one. And when I began to get into that area of, you know, you need Christ as your Savior. You need your sins forgiven so that you can receive eternal life. Right in front of me, over his eyes, it's like a wall came down. And I could sense it, and I could see the devil in his eyes. That the devil basically said, you're not getting him. And I, I tried to share further with him about Christ, and it was like talking to a brick wall. He couldn't get it. He, he could, it, it, and there was, a, there was a spiritual darkness that was blinding him fervently to just try to um, keep him from getting born again. And at that place, unless the Holy Spirit is going to manifest through me with an anointing or the gifts of the Spirit, I can't, I can't cut through that. So while I did not come into that talk unprepared, in other words, I was prayed up. I'd spent time with the Lord, and I really wanted to see that, that man born again. Uh, I couldn't get him. I couldn't get him that day. It's like the enemy had uh, just somehow said, uh, I'm going to really <laughs> block you from getting to him today. And that man, it's like his ears went spiritually deaf. His eyes went spiritually blind. And... I don't know if he's alive anymore. I have a feeling that he's probably not because he was an elderly man. Praise the Lord. But I wish that before I had had that conversation with him that I would have taken some time to have bound the strong man. Because what happened? Oh, that strong man just tied him up, tied him up right on the spot. And it wasn't, it wasn't a place or a, uh, an atmosphere where I could untangle him. Why? Because it's a spiritual entanglement. Praise the Lord. Now, sometimes you can. Sometimes you can minister to stone-cold sinners. But there is a prayer atmosphere, or there is, a, there is an atmosphere of the Spirit that's strong enough to cut through that and break through that, and so their hearts are still reached. I ministered one time in a meeting. Uh, I didn't know who he was until after. The host of the meeting didn't want to tell me. Maybe it was best, uh, but I found out later that this man uh, had murdered uh, quite a few people. Uh, this man was a very bad person. He was an evil person, and if, uh, if you did, did him wrong, then people that did him wrong disappeared, <laughs> but they couldn't, you know, the, the, the authorities couldn't pin it on him because, you know, there's no evidence, so he was a, he was a very evil person. Well, he was in my meetings and he laughed at, at me as a minister. He said, that guy is crazy. Well, of course, that would be the devil, right, to influence somebody to think that that's crazy when he's living in uh, great wickedness and evil. But by the time the meetings were done, I had just a couple of meetings there. 
the Holy Spirit so smote and just struck that man's heart with conviction that he wept and he repented of his sins and he received Christ into his heart as Savior and Lord. He owned multiple pornographic uh, uh, print shops and uh, stores and he was just a really he was a bad apple but he got saved in that meeting and he died not too long after that praise the Lord so there can be a breakthrough where you can get the most hardened of the hard but it takes God's grace to do that praise the Lord now concerning this gentleman that I tried to minister to while that was my last effort maybe maybe by God's grace because he's not willing that any should perish maybe there was somebody else who came along and was able to catch him at the right time praise the Lord mm -mm. but we have to be aware of these tactics of the enemy to try to keep these precious people tied up so that uh, they can't get out and get free praise the Lord thank you Jesus now again no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house now again let's go back almost 30 years ago and I was reading the writings the teachings of pastor dr. David Youngie Cho pastor there of Yoido full gospel church in Seoul Korea now his teachings on prayer were really good but whenever dr. Cho would visit the Western churches particularly America he would he would leave and go back to South Korea with a little bit of a um, divine frustration he would tell the American pastors you know it just seems that the American churches do not understand how to bind the strong man and he said we have received revelation of the importance and not only the importance but how to do it how to bind the strong man and so as you know when Dr. Cho started his ministry in Korea, South Korea was one of the most impoverished nations in the world. It was what would be considered a third world undeveloped country. But today, oh my goodness, South Korea is, is highly developed. It's one of the most advanced nations in the world. And I've, uh, you know, I've been to, to Seoul, Korea. I've ministered there. And I've seen the beautiful vehicles that they make, which are now quite popular in America. I've seen the skyscrapers and the beautiful hotels and the mega churches all over the place. It's wonderful the transformation that takes place whenever the gospel begins to go into an area. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Because before then, it was heavily, primarily, Buddhism and so there was a lot of poverty a lot of hardships but they've had a they've had an economic awakening but that all rode on the on the on the coattails of the spiritual awakening that took place of people coming by the multitudes out of darkness into the light of God's kingdom and so Dr. Cho's church grew and grew and grew as they prayed and prayed and fasted and prayed and fasted and prayed and so the church grew to be the largest church in the world with a membership of over at one point over 850,000 members the head church having seating for 50,000 having I believe at that time eight services a day and then then the other satellite churches or the cell group type churches but really the church uh, if you uh, it actually was way over a million people because the the growth was so exponential that they were also sending new members off to other churches they, they, they were just like the harvest is so big you know we'll just send some over here we'll send some members over here and you know you know just you churches take some new members something that any pastor would be thrilled to see so there was tremendous growth but again that's working these principles going into the into the place of prayer and speaking to the north south east and west give up what are you doing you're bonding the strong man you are chaining him by the authority and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and that that causes his chains to drop 
off of the people that causes them for the first time in their lives to be able to hear the gospel presented in a clear and understandable way. And now because the veil has been pulled back, now they can make a decision. Would you like to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior? Oh, well, when the veil's pulled back, who wants to go to hell? <laughs> yeah, I'll take Jesus. I want to go to heaven, <laughs> right? <laughs> who, in their life, who in their right mind wants to go to the lake of fire and spend all eternity burning in the lake of fire with the devil and all of the demons and all of the rest of the sinners? Who wants to go there? No, when it's presented and the veil's pulled back and the prince of the power of the air, when, when, <laughs> His deceitfulness is pushed back. Oh, ooh, and you see the remedy for sin. Oh, people run to it. People run to it. Praise God. So that's where we're at right now. Now, going back decades ago, Africa used to be called the dark continent by those who would be missiologists, those in theology who would study the subject of missions. What are the unreached areas of the world? And so for, you know, quite a long time, there was a thrust. Let's evangelize Africa. Well, Africa has had revival. And, you know, today the largest churches in the world are now in Africa, in Nigeria. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There is a pastor there that has a church that seats 100,000 people. 100,000 people. So some of these things are foreign to the Western church mindset. But you have to understand before that move of the Spirit came, that great evangelism, great evangelistic move, and, and then God raising up the evangelists, particularly, uh, you know, Reinhard Bonnke and these great evangelists, there was just a lot of that binding. Satan, we bind you. Take your hands off the people. We speak to the north, south, east, west. And so that was going on to a point where it broke. And the chains, the chains of darkness were like dropped. And then the evangelist and then the church went in and began to hold the meetings. And suddenly people like, I'm in sin. My life's not right with God. I, I've, I've got I've to get my life right with God. So whether it's, you know, South Korea. And, and I believe God's got North Korea on the map for a great awakening. Uh, I believe that with all of my heart. Or whether it's Africa, or whether it's Russia, or w whether it's uh, America. I tell you what, my friends, there is a, there's a time that when it happens, you have to rush in. You have to rush in because uh, it's, it's literally a uh, boat sinking, net breaking type harvest. And you have to go while the harvest is there. Same thing in the fall harvest with the nation of Israel. You had to get the harvest in quick because if you don't, the rain is coming. And if the harvest is out in the field or even it's over here by the store, you know, the um, what am I thinking? The threshing area. You, you've got to do your threshing quick because even if it's at that stage, but you don't get it covered and you don't get it put away, then the rain's going to come and it's all going to rot. And so you lost your harvest. So we have to, we had to be prepared to move. We have to pray. And at the same time, because there's already been a lot of prayer there, there is going to be the breaking forth of it. And we have to be ready to go. Praise the Lord. But let's not take any chances. Let's continue to apply these old fashioned principles of binding and loosing of getting in there behind the scenes and doing the groundwork. Satan, take your hands off of them. Release them in the north, south, east, and west. Yes, Pastor Stephen, let's let's reach eastern north. Let's reach the eastern Carolinas. Well, let's let's reach the Middle East. <laughs> There's a phenomenal harvest going on right now in the Middle East. Tremendous harvest going on in Iran right now. Still, today in China, there is a tremendous harvest going on in the underground church. Praise God. Hallelujah. My friends, I believe we're going to have our time. But see, while God's got some beautiful plans for America, uh, God has a global perspective. And you have to have that view because that's what we're in it. We're, we're pulling global nets. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, let me close by sharing a couple of things of importance. I've given the example of two men 
that taught two beautiful revelations. Uh, that would be Dr. Larry Lee and Dr. David Youngie Cho. Whenever you're on the front lines, whether you're Dr. Cho or you're Dr. Billy Graham, or whoever you might be, whenever you're on the front lines and you're soul winning, and don't let this back you off from God's assignment to be a harvester. You have to walk close with the Lord. Pastor Larry Lee really went through some difficult times. The enemy snagged him in some areas that greatly hurt his life and greatly hurt his ministry. And what could have been something much greater was something that took a hit and in many ways, he didn't recover. He didn't recover. So you can be called and anointed, and you could be having beautiful things happen. But we're going to have to be really sharp, because this next move is a sustained move, and it will be sustained as we stay very humble, and we walk very close to God. Again, not just Dr. Lee, but uh, Pastor Cho. He had his difficulties too. The world's uh, most famous pastor, pastor of the world's largest church, looked up to and esteemed by many people, not just in uh, uh, South Korea, but really around the world. Because, you know, he, he had ch churches planted all over Southeast Asia. There's, there's churches in Japan. There's churches all over, you know, Singapore and other places that were launched out of that great move of God. But see, it was only a couple of years ago when Dr. Cho, as an elderly man, barely, barely avoided going to prison. Now, these things are common knowledge, so I'm just sharing that not to in any way condemn, and I don't want to tarnish the legacy of these men. That's not my intent, but I'm just trying to say you have to be careful. I have to be careful. We all have to walk with the Lord in this era because there's going to be a tremendous harvest and the enemy, oh, he's, he's going to be just looking for any chinks in the armor. So you have to have your walk tight with the Lord. You have to have your walk with the Lord real sharp. What happened with Dr. Cho is that there was some secret embezzlement that was going on. His sons who were in the church, and they were very high-ranking church officials, they had done some things with some money, the equivalent in American dollars, it'd be, you know, several million dollars, and it appears there was some embezzlement. So they went to prison, and the judge said that Dr. Cho himself deserved to go to prison, but because he has done so much for the betterment of the nation, uh, he was not convicted. But the grief and the sorrow that came into his heart for having uh, misrepresented the Lord's name, he wept and he wept and he wept and he was so grieved that he had done so much, but yet it was marred because he did not finish in a way that he wanted to. Well, there's forgiveness, praise God. And I'm confident that the Lord forgave him because uh, he, he repented and, uh, and he was just so hurt by that. And, you know, that affected a lot of people. But my friends, the work, of course, continues. The church in uh, South Korea is vibrant, strong, powerful. Uh, but I, I want us to be aware that when you are dealing with these powers of darkness, give them up so forth. Satan, I bind you. Loose them and let them go. Well, you know, you, you have to be walking with the Lord because if there's something where the enemy can, can say, hey, you know, this, this lady or this guy is causing me a lot of trouble. They're, they're bringing, uh, you know, they're, they're plundering our kingdom. What, what can we do to undercut this work or stop the work? Uh, if there's something, they're going to be looking. So, I'm just saying walk with the Lord. Now, one very good minister, he realized the same thing, and he said, Lord, he said, my ministry is blessed, and you're doing a great work in my ministry. But he said, Lord, my ministry is not at the level of some of these other ministers. And some of these other ministers also had really good walks with you. And he said, yet, Lord, as much 
as they did, that was wonderful, and as many of the souls as they won, he said, Lord, some of them had very, um, they, they had some real collapses. And he said, so if that happened to them, how can I be safeguarded against such things when it would appear that some of them knew you quite better than even I do? So how can I be assured that I can be kept safe while the ministry continues to grow and while, you know, souls are continued to be one? So look, this is not just for ministers. This is for anybody that wants to serve the Lord on the front lines. And this is the answer that the Lord gave to that minister who said, Lord, how can I be preserved when others have fallen? And this is what the Lord told him. Let's take a look at it. This would be in the book of Numbers. Praise God. And I'm turning there right now over to the book of Numbers. If you're a mathematician, this is the book for you. If you like numbers, praise God. Numbers chapter 12 and verse 3 is the response that the Lord gave to that pastor. How can I be safeguarded? And this is what it says. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. So here you had Moses leading a nation that, uh, you know, scholars conservatively say, uh, the nation was at least 2 million people, probably more, probably more. But if we're going to use conservative number, 2 million. So here's a man leading 2 million people, and he's looked up to, he's depended on, he's counted on, and he can't have a meltdown. He can't go down. Well, how, how would he be sustained? Through his anointing, through his soul winning ability, through all of uh, those are gifts from the Lord. Praise God. But this is how he was sustained was through a walk of humility. And the Lord told that pastor that if you'll stay humble like Moses, then you'll be protected and you'll be able to finish your race, finish your course without having something happen that would be uh, hurtful to others or yourself. Now, the man Moses was very humble. Now, I think it's fascinating that Moses knew this. And, of course, we know that the first five books of the Bible were written by Moses and so he actually wrote this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So he knew that he was the most humble man on the face of the earth. And, you know, th that, that's okay to know that. And he, you know, somebody is after all, right? Somebody is today. Somebody today is the most humble man. Somebody is the most humble woman on the face of the earth. I don't know who that is, but it's somebody has that title right now. But... There is the blessing, there is the lifting up, there is the, uh, even like God told Abraham, I'll make your name great in the earth, so that denotes that fame is a covenant blessing. Somebody said, well, in the Hebrew, that actually means that God will make your character great. Well, trust me, if you have great character, that's going to get out as well. So you're right back again to the element of fame or being well known. And that's a blessing from the Lord. But as, as we stay humble, we'll be able to bring this harvest in and stay protected. Praise God. You know, I talked to a dear spiritual friend of mine years back. He's in heaven now, Dr. Wade Taylor. And I said, Wade, we're talking in our just alone time, hanging out together. I said, Wade, I said a lot of ministers say that you're a very, very humble man. He said, yes. And he said, I'm very proud of that. <laughs> Uh, he had a very like dry humor that was real funny. He could spin it. And, uh, you know, so he's, he's turning that, he's turning that away. He doesn't, he's basically saying, I don't, I don't even want to hear that. So he had a way of deflecting that stuff through humility. And that was a safeguard for him. Praise God. Now the man Moses was very humble more than all men who were on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so you need to have you need to have those people that will surround you and that will help you, support you, but also help protect you. Now, I've got a great team around me. I've got a great wife. And also, the Lord has helped me with the teachings of what you would call many of the, of the saints. Uh, the Desert Fathers, the early monastic saints, they, they, they can be very, very helpful because... 
even as some of the early desert fathers said concerning that path of walking with God, which they directly got it from the apostles. Uh, it was just handed down. The teachings were handed down. And they would say, this is not just one, one way in which to walk. They said, this is the only way that you walk serving the Lord. You have to stay humble. You have to walk very close to God. You need to be a person of prayer. You need to incorporate fasting into your life. And they said, these aren't uh, things that are optional. They said, this is the only way. This is the apostolic way to walk. And if you drift over into real, real uh, carefree living and real loosey goosey living, then uh, you, you could get in trouble. Praise the Lord. So we want to walk close with the Lord so that we can have good results. Um, and that we can finish. Yes. Speak to the north, south, east, and west. Yes. Let's get the souls. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Bind the strong man. Hallelujah. Yes. Be a mighty instrument in the hands of the Lord. Yes. Praise God. While, while at the same time, not deviating from a place of safety and protection with the Lord that comes from staying very near to him. Look, you're going to have to stay tied into the vine because out of the vine flows the life that causes the branches to be healthy and for the branches to produce the fruit. But if you get cut off from the vine, things may stay green for a while, but eventually uh, stuff's going to start drying up. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we're going to we're going to walk close with the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. It's very important to walk in wisdom to be able to discern those who got it right and those who did well but made some mistakes and glean and learn from their mistakes so that we won't have to repeat them. Mm, mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we give you praise right now. Mm -mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anytime you're serving the Lord, the enemy stirs up people to speak lies and to tell lies and to spread things are just total fabrication. You wouldn't believe some of the crazy lies I've heard about even myself in my ministry around here. And I've heard some things float by that are just like, where in the world did that come from? That's so untrue. That would take a very imaginative, creative liar to even come up with something like that. So we can understand that, but you want to be walking with the Lord so that there aren't accusations that would be something that would be wrong. Praise the Lord. That would be truthful. Mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for the blood, the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory. Glory. Don't ever deviate from your walk with the Lord, because if you do, you could be on the top of the mountain one day and the next day do something that can be so embarrassing, so humiliating. Why? You, you just you got away from where the life was at. Mm -mm -mm. And as the glory increases and as the fish are coming in. Look, I'm not just preaching this on my behalf. I'm preaching this because. Uh, you know, I mean, how many of you have ever seen a, a fish, a fish cleaning factory being run by one person? There's no factory run by one person. If the fish are being brought in, we're all fish cleaning. We're, we're, it's all hands on deck. So that th these messages are not just for the ministers. These messages are for anybody that wants to be on the front lines of Christian service. Praise God. Mm hmm. Because I see the anointing of the Lord rising on you, the glory of the Lord rising on the ministers. Well, yes, but on you too. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that you can be the person that God's called you to be and function in the career that God's called you to function in and to accomplish what he wants you to do and be the witness, the witness that he wants you to be in your specific uh, arena. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. 
praise God. I mean, they, they look for, for accusations against Daniel. What can we find on this guy? What kind of dirt can we find on this guy? We don't like him. We need to get rid of him. They couldn't find anything. They had a meeting and said, well, we, can't, we don't have anything on this guy. <laughs> we, we've searched everything. We don't have anything on him. And they thought, well, we'll have to create something else. So, you know, the Lord is moving right now because the move of God is coming. Praise the Lord. And we're going after the souls. God's going to give them to us. He's going to give them to us. Praise the Lord. So fly. Fly in a, in a heart of humility. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I've known some ministers that are um, very high-minded. Very high-minded. And... Um, can be very degrading to people that don't have it all together, that don't have the look, that don't have the image and presentation that they want in their church, that don't have that image that they want to be associated with. And so uh, there's a lot of that stuff out there. And, uh, you know, the, the enemy's not really concerned about that. But the real glory is coming to those that will walk with the Lord and use the authority that Christ delegates to them to unlock the prison doors, and set the captives free. And I tell you what, we're going to have, we're going to have, we're going to have some trophy fish come in. Praise the Lord. We're going to get some really bad sinners. Hallelujah. Yes, they're going to come in. <laughs> oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Pastor Stephen, when it happens, are you going to get a famous unbeliever and are you going to put him on TV and put yourself next to him? That way you could ride off of his popularity. Uh, usually when stuff like that happens, the celebrity Christians crash and burn, usually within two years, if not two months. Why? They're not discipled. We're out to, we're out to get people saved and make disciples Make disciples, not, you know, not to pump up their egos. Hallelujah. You know, we're, we're out to make them disciples. And if they're not discipled, you know, they're not ready. They're not ready. I'm ready to give my testimony. Well, if, if you are, then that's good. But if you're half baked, then you need to stay in the oven a little bit longer. Praise the Lord. Mm, I could tell you some stories on that. I used to live in Southern California. A friend of mine, a minister that I know, had a Bible study. I won't say what it was called because uh, I want to kind of I want to kind of veil this a little bit. And one of the fav uh, one of the famous not not on a low, not down low one of the very famous movie stars she got saved praise God born again mm. Mm. and she loved Jesus and she wanted to have her own Bible study. Mm. And so my, uh, my friend, the minister, said, well, that's good that you want to teach others and stuff, but we, we've got to get you grounded in the Word. Now, you're a baby Christian. We've got, uh, uh, you know, you're a full-grown lady, but you're very young in the things of God. Uh, and, you know, of course, you're world famous, so we've got to get the Word into you. We've got to get you solid. We, uh, oh, oh, I don't need that. I, I could go. I am ready to do my own Bible study right now. And he's like, no, no, no. We need, we need to get you, get you solid in the things of God. Well, she wouldn't listen. And in her spiritual immaturity started her own Bible study and uh, and then uh, was invited or not not invited that's not the term was uh, asked to be the star in this next movie that they were putting out there in Hollywood and she said yes I'll take the role and she does the movie and she comes out uh, in the movie and uh, just I, and I, I didn't see the movie. And I'll never see the movie, but uh, took almost all of her clothes off, took everything off uh, up top uh, with the back facing. OK, that, that's probably her. Out. Well, they didn't see the front. Well, everybody on set did. And the minister that I know, he said he went to her and talked to her, said, what are you doing? You are a Christian and you're a very well-known Christian. And you're how old in a Bible study, and you're 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 going totally nude, you know. They're on the set now. The camera's only seeing your back. But what are you doing? What 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 kind of a life is this? So um, she wouldn't listen. So uh, that's uh, that's not what the Lord's looking for. 
He's looking for conversions that'll stick even under persecution. Praise God. Mm -hmm. The Hollywood celebrity Christianity, uh, that stuff is, uh, it's not going to get you through when the rubber meets the road. Any type, of, any type of persecution, that stuff melts like a snow cone on a hot summer day. Melts quick. It won't stand. But the Lord is looking for those that sell out for him completely and say, this is what I've always wanted. This is what I've always needed. By the way, you know who the largest group is who's coming to Christ who have that type of heart it's the Muslims who've had uh, Islam rammed down their throat by force in various nations you've got to be uh, a Muslim or you're gonna we're gonna kill your whole family and so they're forced to take it and they've had that for generations they've had that for their whole life and they're fed up with the captivity and the awful bondage of it and many of them who have fled out of these countries, of course, many in the country, but many who fled to the country, uh, out of those countries uh, under Sharia law. They've come to these other areas where they've heard the gospel for the first time, and they're like, oh, this is what we've been looking for all of our life. Freedom! Freedom! And Jesus offers it to us. And so they receive Christ, and, uh, and they're quite puzzled by the lukewarm Christians who don't seem to understand that this is the greatest thing in the universe. This is what they were looking for all of their life. <laughs> How can you be lethargic when this is the, um, the only means of deliverance? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's work together. Let's help each other. Let's encourage each other. Let's watch out for each other. Praise God. Let's pray for each other. And let's, let's pull in the harvest. Now, Father, we thank you. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you for laborers, laborers for the harvest, and the person that's watching right now, that Christian that wants to be a laborer, Lord God, anoint them, empower them, uh, Lord, whatever you need to do to put them on the front lines as a laborer. And Father Jesus said, pray, pray for laborers. So Father, for those that would have a heart to be laborers, and I thank you for those that labor with this ministry through their giving and their prayers. So, Father, those that want to be frontline laborers, I pray that you bless them, empower them in every way that you've called that you have called them to serve in this harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, they did a study about 20 years ago on one of these large crusades in Africa and they crunched the numbers and this was the number they came up with for every soul saved through you know the preaching and the evangelism and the the renting of the the giant tents or even if it's done outside in the vast crusade the electricity the the money to put the meeting on and stuff like that for every soul saved it came out as an average of one dollar per soul so if you want it to reach and not just reach but pull in a harvest of a million souls they knew it's going to cost at least a million dollars praise the Lord and God's going to raise up financial champions who are laborers who you just burn in your heart to see God uh, bless your business and bless you financially because you know you can convert that as currency for souls through your giving and two, evangelistic outreaches, praise God. And then, of course, then, of course, there's uh, the fish cleaning factory. Hey, we got all these fish. Let's clean them. Let's disciple them. And let's, let's, um, let's turn many of them right back out into harvesters themselves. Praise God. Mm, mm, mm. And then, and then when we have done our job, and the gospel, as Jesus has said, is preached into all of the earth. Then the end will come in the sense of we are taken to go and be with the Lord. Hallelujah. And then the next things will unfold in the earth, which will be the period of wrath, which is the tribulation and the judgment that will be poured out upon the sinners of the world. 
as God at that time begins to deal with bringing the Jewish people back to him, back to his heart. Praise God. Mm -mm, but we will be in heaven at the marriage supper of the Lamb, delivered from the wrath to come. Praise God. If you're watching right now, and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, but the Holy Spirit is really working on your heart, and you know you're not right with God, you need to get that fixed today. Praise the Lord. This is not like fixing the brakes in your car that are going out. This is far more serious. This is fixing where you're going to spend eternity. So right now, pray this prayer out loud after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that you are Savior and Lord. Jesus, come into my heart. Wash my sins away. Give me your new life. Write my name in your book of life. Jesus, I accept you now as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for saving me. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the family of God. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Glory, glory. Glory, glory to God. If you're a backslidden Christian, come back to Christ right now. You walked away from the Lord. Perhaps you once knew him, but you're far from God and you're off in sin. Repent right now. Say, Jesus, I repent. I turn from my sin. Jesus, restore me back into a right relationship with you. In your name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now walk with him. He's going to get you out of the stuff you got stuck in that was a mess. He's going to get you out. Don't ever go back into it again. Praise the Lord. Mm, 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 mm. Let's take Holy Communion together. Grab some unleavened bread. I use these little wafers. Praise God. And grab some grape juice. Let's pray over it. Father, we thank you for the bread and the juice. Jesus said that when we receive it, by faith, when we take communion, it is his body and his blood. So we pray this prayer of consecration and this prayer of faith. And we know that we are now receiving the body and the blood of Christ, our Savior. Thank you, O God. Father, as we receive the body of Jesus, we just thank you for keeping us protected and safe. We thank you for humility. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Even as Saul, when you chose him to be the first king of Israel, and it was time for the coronation, they couldn't find him. He was hiding amongst the luggage. Father, even during the Welsh revival with Evan Roberts, they would look for him to preach, and he'd, he'd be hiding in prayer and wouldn't come out of a hayloft or something like that so many different times. Father, let your humility be in us. We give you praise. We thank you, Father, that it is amazing what you can do. It is amazing what you can do when you get all the credit and all the glory. So we thank you, Father God. Let your spirit move in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We now receive the body of Christ. Let's partake together. Father, we thank you for our brothers and sisters in the persecuted churches or the persecuted church. Father, there's only one church, but the various countries where the church would be. Father, strengthen our brothers and sisters in China, in Iran, in Pakistan. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. In North Korea, Father, we give you praise. Uphold your people. Thank you, Father God. Strengthen them. Strengthen them that they will not deny Christ, even unto death. Father, we give you praise. Let that same spirit be in us. Will we overcome by the word of our testimony, by the blood of the Lamb, and that we also have that same spirit, spirit of faith, that we 
love our lives, not even unto death. Thank you, Father God. Help us to really get in that flow and to walk it. Now, we give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for living martyrs. Thank you, Father God. Father, melt up. Uh, melt away and burn up all uh, uh, any goofy elements of pseudo Christianity. Uh, these things that are not biblical that just kind of creep into the church through culture or Hollywood or wherever it comes from. Lord, uh, Lord, just burn up anything that would cause there to be a spineless backbone within your people. Lord, thank you. And to put a rod of iron and to the back of your people to not compromise the gospel and to not deny their faith in you, even should it mean the loss of work, the loss of anything, the loss of everything. Now, Father, we give you praise as many of your people around the world face this on a daily basis. We bless you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Just before you receive the blood of Christ in the Boxer Rebellion, there in China, a rogue group of soldiers came in and began to kill all the missionaries in one village and began to kill all the Christians, those who had converted to Christianity, who'd gotten saved. They began to kill them one by one, one by one, in a very brutal way. There was a young girl, the daughter of the, of the missionary. The, the, she was the child. She was the daughter of the, the mom and dad missionaries. She, she escaped and ran away. And she went and hid uh, in the barn outside. But a traitor said, oh, their, their daughter. We saw her run away. Well, the soldiers went to the barn. They found her. And they murdered her and killed her. And they killed all the Christians. Well, that marauding band of wicked men moved on to a different city and continued to do what they did. Eventually, when all of this passed, Christians came back, missionaries came back, and they went to that town where all of these believers had been martyred, and they heard what had happened, and they went to the barn to find if there was anything uh, yeah, if, if there was anything that would give any information or anything of what had occurred just beyond the testimony, what was heard and what was seen. And the only thing they found as they dug down into the ground a little bit, right at the spot where she was killed, they dug down a little bit. And the only thing remaining uh, was a scripture that had been torn out of the Bible. The, the Bible had been burned, everything else ransacked. There was just one scripture left. And all it said was, those whom the world was not worthy of. Mm -mm -mm. That would be from the book of Hebrews. Those who loved the Lord and gave up everything, even their own lives. The world was not even worthy that people like that, Christians like that, should even be on the face of the earth. Mm -mm. My friends, it is a very sinful dark world that we live in. I know it. I know it can be beautiful. It's a beautiful day. You go out, you see all of that, but in the spirit there, there is sin working through the hearts of evil people and things taking place. And while we are God conscious and we have a righteousness consciousness because of who we are in Christ, you must be spiritually alert and aware of the hour in which we're living. Father, we thank you for the spirit of faith. We give you praise and we thank you for a mighty harvest and for the glory that you are unveiling to your people for this end time hour. We receive the blood of Christ now in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. One, one day it will be worth it all. It will be worth it all. Let's receive the blood of Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. My friends, in your times of prayer, make sure that you get, jump in there, spirit of faith, and speak to the north, south, east, and west, and set the captives free. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you back next time. Bye-bye.